Oh, I'm accidentally hitting the cord. So, oh, can you go like to the top of that? Can you go to the top of that? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> there, there are a lot of trees here. This is like a national park. Yeah. This is like a park. Hmm? Park, park, park. Then attraction, like hey. camera action. Secret building. I oh, know. <laughs> that like a secret building or some. This is big, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, the statue might not be that big, but the stand. The stand is like, oof. You're sweating, oh my gosh. I really am. Wait, yeah, all of you are sweating. I'm the only one that doesn't sweat. What? <laughs> I guess what? I'm better tolerant to the eat than you guys are. Let's go to the front of the statue. I, yeah. Oh, recycling. All right, I got some recycling stuff. They, got, they have recycled bins. Okay, okay. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> Leave the trees alone. Ash. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the sun. Where is the sun? Okay, up there. Oh God. Um.
where you think you're going? You're resting, I mean. From Life Magazine, where she's decked out like a NASCAR driver, and all these different uh, corporations could have been sponsoring her. This is also the time period when... Everyone's just chilling. Everyone's just chilling, lying down. Everyone's just chilling, lying down in the shade. Just chilling for me. Just like what? Because you're running. Well, well, working. You're running. You're using more energy than we are. Wait, which way? Oh my gosh. No, you have to pay 50 cents for that. I'm not even sure if the camera is picking up my voice because of the mask. Oh, just like the head of us. Uh, yeah, come, wait, uh. come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but what's it's small. He's so Don't worry, I'll call you. He's so small. Yeah. Can we get a front view of the statue? I There's a lot of cargo over there. That's like a cargo area. Now, I'll just end it here, cut it, and make another video and then edit it in. I guess that's how I can do this. America is fully committed to its founding ideals of human liberty and equality. Nearly a century earlier, France had been a crucial ally in America's war for independence, a war for the cause of liberty. He imagines a monument, a gift from the French people to commemorate that alliance and to celebrate America's progress toward liberty for all. With the fall of their own republic, the cause of liberty was faltering in France. La Boulay hopes this gift will rouse a new call for democracy there. He shares his idea with a small group of colleagues and friends. Among La Boulay's most enthusiastic supporters is Frédéric Auguste Bertoldi, a talented Parisian sculptor. He is fascinated by the colossal monuments of antiquity 
and the powerful impact of using figures of immense scale to express enormous ideas. In 1871, Bartholdi crisscrosses America, gathering inspiration, discussing the project with publishers, politicians, and even President Ulysses S. Grant. He searches for the perfect site and finds it, Bedloe's Island, just a tiny speck of land in New York Harbor. Up to the artist, a dramatic stage for the colossal statue he had begun to envision. New York Harbor, one of the busiest in the world, teams with international trade and an increasing flow of immigrants drawn to and fueling an unprecedented surge of industry and wealth in the wake of the Civil War. Every ship coming and going will pass the statue in the harbor. New York has become the very gateway to the new world and the freedom America has come to represent. La Boulay sets the project in motion. Authorizing the president to designate and set apart the site of the colossal statue in the harbor. He secures permission to place the statue on Bedloe's Island and launches a massive fundraising effort. His plan calls for the people of France to donate the statue. Americans will provide a grand pedestal for the statue on the chosen site. Bartoli spends years on the design. The ancient Roman goddess Libertas has long been used to personify the idea of liberty. But the idea of liberty is controversial in much of the world. It suggests violence and revolution. In the end, Bartoli's vision transforms the goddess into a bearer of law and light. He calls his statue Liberty Enlightening the World. It is an immense idea, and in 1875 in Paris, Bartholdi begins to build an immense statue of the figure Liberty. Hey, thanks everybody, so you just move right next door to the second little theater for the next part. And just make sure you have your valuables with you, okay? Thank you. thousands of measurements in order to fashion accurate, full-scale plaster casts of the statue's individual parts. They build 300 wooden forms that follow every contour of the plaster models, then use the forms to hammer sheets of copper into shapes that will fit together like gigantic puzzle pieces. The epic puzzle takes more than five years to complete. Bartoldi stokes public enthusiasm with showings of work in progress in the United States and Paris. He sells tickets for tours of his workshops. Meanwhile, the sculptor has engineering problems to solve. The statue's copper skin weighs more than 179,000 pounds. Liberty cannot stand without internal structure. For this, Bartoldi turns to the brilliant Alexandre Gustave Eiffel later famed for what Americans call the Eiffel Tower. Paris, 1881. The full statue begins to rise up, towering over the neighborhood surrounding the construction yard. By completion, more than 300,000 people have come to behold her. Dignitaries, artists, writers, and everyday gawkers, all stunned by her scale and stirred by the power of the idea she conveys. Bartoldi's crew disassembles the statue and packs it in more than 200 crates for its voyage across the Atlantic. With its heavy load, the ship plows through storms and high winds and nearly capsizes. But on June 19, 1885, the French ship Isère enters New York Harbor, met with enormous fanfare and a naval parade. Over the next year, atop the new pedestal on Bedloe's Island, the statue rises again, now to an astounding 305 and a half feet, from the ground to the top of her torch. 
October 28, 1886, America formally dedicates a Statue of Liberty. Visitors experience what is perhaps Bartholdi's greatest stroke of genius. They can go inside the statue. Rising up through the structure, the statue is not just an engineering marvel, but an unforgettable metaphor for the dynamic and inspiring force of liberty. Visitors see the world as liberty sees it. The statue lifts a torch of hope, lighting the way to possibility, to the promise of liberty and justice for all.